reform are a, um, a criminal issue? Madam Chair. Madam, uh, the Honourable Chris Farfoy. <laughs> Madam Chair, thank you um, uh, for giving me another call. Um, I thought I'd better do so because after the last contribution I feared there might be a closure soon. Um, can I respond to some of the questions that have been asked um, uh, from um, members opposite? Uh, first of all, um, uh, to Chris Pink's question about uh, the, the date uh, in which this piece of legislation uh, comes into force. Um, it is closely aligned uh, to another piece of legislation, the Custom and Excise um, uh, Act, uh, which comes into force the same day. I think it's a fair question that the member asks uh, as to the readiness of customs uh, uh, to be ready for the new regimes. And can I just assure the member in the short time that I've been the Minister of Customs that this is an issue that um, the customs uh, management is taking very seriously and have um, done, I think, excellent work um, given uh, that the time frame is not too far away to ensure that all frontline and management uh, and leadership uh, are ready for the change in regime uh, with the custom excise uh, bill and also uh, within um, this piece of legislation as well. Um, can I also just uh, generally, I think a number of members have asked um, uh, uh, questions about the new um, bill in terms of powers that uh, have existed pre and will um, uh, exist post the passing of this legislation. Um, as I mentioned and, and others have mentioned um, already, Madam Chair, uh, there are already two international treaties which New Zealand is party to. Again, Article 108 of the United Conventions Law of the Sea and Article 17 of the United Nations Convention Against Illicit Traffic in Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances um, that allows, in some part, limited powers um, under international law. But this piece of legislation, uh, as I said, um, gives some certainty um, by putting it in our own um, legislation. Um, Mr Walker, thank you for your concern for my health. Um, but I can I ask you, um, in terms of your question around um, vessels, if you look at uh, clause uh, eight three in the schedule, uh, you'll see that vessels can be forfeited and further assets may be sought um, also uh, under the crimes, proceeds of crimes legislation. And I also think um, uh, Simeon Brown asked a fair enough question in terms of the definition of uh, the precursor substance. And if I can point uh, Mr Brown to page 12 of the bill, um, a copy of the bill that I've got anyway, and the definition of precursor substance uh, is the same as that as clause one. Um, I'll just make sure I read. Uh, precursor substance has the meaning given to that term in section two one of the Misuse of Drugs Act. So, uh, if Mr. Brown would like to know exactly what um, uh, that is, then I suggest he head towards that uh, clause in that piece, particular piece of legislation. Okay. The question. The question is. Can I? I can close. No one taking it. The question is that parts one and two, the schedule and clauses one and two stand part. All those in favour say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I will report this bill without amendment presently. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh. Members, the House has resumed. Mr Speaker, the Committee has considered the, Maritimes, the Maritime Powers Extension Bill and reports it without amendment. Mr Speaker, I move that the report be adopted. 
The question is that the report be adopted. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I call on Government Order of the Day number two. Military Justice Legislation.